Social structures. This is a term that you won't always see explicitly defined in every 101 textbook, but it is a term that is often implied or even assumed in a lot of sociological discussion and literature. It's also very useful in understanding the basic subject matter of sociology and sociology's purpose. An easy way to understand social structure is by comparing it to a similar term, social institution, which was defined in another video. If we were to imagine the relationship between these two terms graphically, we might do so in one of two ways. If we draw them as two circles, social institution and social structure, we see that there is an area in which they overlap. This is because it can be very difficult to understand when something is a social institution or when it's a social structure, where one ends and the other begins. There are a lot of things that sociologists study that could be considered either a social institution or a social structure. And in fact, depending on the nature of your research and what you're trying to learn, you might choose to look at something as a social institution or as a social structure. How you choose to look at it influences what you learn about it. Another way that we might represent the relationship between the two is like this. Generally, a social structure is considered a broader category of phenomenon, with a social institution being a more specific kind of a thing. Thus, we might say that a social, all social institutions are social structures, but not everything we think of as a social structure would qualify as a social institution. To go through their characteristics in more detail would yield a chart or a list, something like this. A social institution is a specific entity, such as a university, a church, or a business. It is officially regulated meaning that within that entity there are specialized people or rule books designed to regulate and manage the behavior of the people within the institution. Social institutions are built around an idea, and this idea is expressed openly in mission statements or other similar kinds of documents. Social institutions have clear boundaries. You know when you're in one, and you know when you're out of it. Within a social institution, there are roles that are officially recognized and usually carry with them official titles, such as student, professor, priest, or CEO. Often there are very rigorous or high standards for obtaining the title and fulfilling the role. A social structure, in contrast, is much more vague. In fact, we don't really think of it as a specific kind of a thing as we do a social institution. A university, for example, is easy to identify. We know where the campus is located, we know the, where the borders are, we know where the buildings are. A social structure can really only be seen by its effects. We think of a social structure as a set of pattern behaviors, as patterns of interaction and social relations and relationships. People who are under the influence, if you will, of a social structure often exhibit certain kinds of behaviors, things they do all of the time, or things they always do in certain situations. A social structure is much more broad. It is hard to understand and hard to identify where it begins and where it ends. It can be much more fluid and dynamic. Social structures often have very rigorous, very strict kinds of regulation, but that regulation takes place unofficially. There's no appointed person responsible for the regulation and the monitoring of behavior. Usually all people who participate in a social structure find ways to regulate each other's behavior. Understanding how stru social structures work, what they are, how these regulations occur, why people always do things in particular ways when they're in a social structure, is really um, at the heart of what sociology is trying to understand. Some different examples of social structures are the following. Education. In the social institution video, we used a university as an example of a social institution. We also talked about the education system of a nation, the laws or government entities responsible for education. When we think of education as a social structure, we're talking about something that's more like the style of education. For example, if you look at a kindergarten class, a college class, and a Sunday school class, or maybe a training meeting for new employees in a corporation, 
you'll find that the way they are taught, the way they are educated, is very, very similar, even though each of those institutions is very, very different. Sunday schools, at least in the United States, are quite often conducted in the exact same way that university classes are conducted. This is because the learning or education system in the United States is a particular kind of social structure. Whether you're a friend telling your other friends about what you did over the weekend, or whether you're a professor telling your students about a particular kind of concept, you all use the same pattern behaviors to transfer that information. Family. Family is a concept that can be thought of as a social institution or as a social structure. It's a good example of those phenomena that lie in the boundary between the two. And, depending on what you're trying to learn about the family, you might choose to look at it as an institution or as a social structure. Sexism and racism are interesting social structures. They are social structures that are centered on the idea of differences between people. Differences in their character or being, if you will, but also differences in their opportunities and privileges within a society. One of the things that's interesting about a social structure is that it can be very hard to change. This is in part because it's often vague and hard to identify. If you're uncomfortable with racism in the nation in which you live, it can be very difficult to know where to go to protest or to picket or what exactly to do about it. It's the kind of thing that people say they can't quite put their finger on. Social structures are the kinds of things that we all feel subject to, but we can't always easily identify. This makes them very persistent, and it can make them very difficult to change. The Internet is an interesting example of a social structure. It is widespread, it is used by many, but it can be difficult to define and difficult to understand where it ends and begins. There are also pattern behaviors observable on the Internet. If you read enough comment sections after news articles or YouTube videos, you'll see certain patterns of response. There are people who agree, people who disagree, people who come there with their own agenda, and the ever-popular troll. The Internet is a social structure because it patterns the way people act whenever they use it. A nation-state. This is an interesting one because states and nations are sometimes considered institutions. Um, but in many ways, they're also social structures. When we talk about a nation-state as a social structure, we're not thinking in terms of the political boundaries. We're thinking of the essence, or the identity, almost the ethnicity of the people that identify with that nation-state. To give you a concise, somewhat concise, definition, um, I'll leave you with this st sentence, or whatever it is. Social structure is an enduring, regular social arrangement with persistent, recurring patterns of behavior created by interaction, relationship, and the exchange of ideas. They tend to be loosely or unofficially defined and regulated. Thank you for watching.